What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out the Potenzix D60. It is a remote tilt adjustable 110 degree field of view 1080p 5G Wi-Fi FPV optical flow sensor GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. So let's open up the box and check it out. All right, here we go. Here is the quadcopter looking pretty nice, fully assembled. Now, I've received the one that has the white canopy. It also comes with the one that has the black canopy as well, which will make it a solid black quadcopter. So take your pick on that. Uh, nice brushless motors. Now, it did come out of the box without the props installed. So you will have to install the props yourselves, which is pretty easy to do. Each of these arms have letters on them. And this arm and this arm will have the letter A on it and this prop here and this prop also has the letter A. Uh, very easy to put them together. This arm and this arm has the letter B and this prop and this prop will have the letter B as well. Now the screws on this arm and on this arm will tighten counterclockwise and on this arm and on this arm will tighten clockwise. So very easy to put together. So taking a look at the quadcopter here is the 110 degree 5G Wi-Fi FPV 1080p camera, remote tilt adjustable, almost horizon, maybe about five degree or so, tilted down, and you can remote control tilt all the way down to perhaps about a little beyond 45 degrees for selfie. So very, very nice. And taking a look at the bottom here, we do have a micro SD card slot in which it supports up to a 32 gigabyte class 10 or above micro SD card. So you can record your photos and your videos directly into the micro SD card, which is very nice. And there is the optical flow sensor position right on the bottom as well. And looking at the motor pods, they do have LED lights underneath and it has a light casing and right on the bottom of the light casing, there is a rubber footing so you can stick that landing, which is really nice as well. So it doesn't have any on and off push button or slide button type uh, power switch. So once you put the battery in, in, it will power up the quadcopter. So the battery bay is in the back here. And here is the battery, a proprietary battery. It is a 7.4 volt, 1800 milliamp size battery. Uh, it's supposed to give you a flight time of about 20 minutes. So all you gotta do is just slide it in and it'll power up the quadcopter. So I'm gonna leave the battery on the side. So let's take a look at what else we get in the box here. Uh, we got the charge cable which I've already used to charge up the battery. So you're going to go ahead and slide this section of the cable to the battery itself and power up the USB. And there's going to be a red LED light that turns on while you are charging and once you are done charging it will turn off which took about a good hour and maybe 30 minutes or so to charge up the battery so that's around there i'm not sure if the battery was fully discharged but it took me about a little over an hour to fully charge up the battery so we got a bag of goodies and this one contains the uh prop nut tightening tool or grabber uh an allen wrench and a screwdriver and we also get another full set of those props and here is the instruction booklet, very thick instruction booklet. It comes in different languages as well. It goes on to show you everything you need to know. Uh, the diagram of the quadcopter, all the parts, and most important, the all of the button functions on the remote control, how to go about flying it, calibrating it, and all that stuff. And one of the other important things here is the uh, Wi-Fi phone app is a QR code to download the Wi-Fi phone app and the name of the app is called the Potenzic GPS app free downloadable app in the App Store so you can go ahead and check it out and here is the remote control very smooth looking minimalistic looking remote control the antennas do fold out but these are not functioning antennas but what I found was here's the phone clip that slides out from the top and there's another little clip you fold down you put the bottom of the phone here and put the top of the phone there. It is a little flimsy phone clip. So once you put the phone on there, you can use the antennas to kind of hold it in place. And the antennas are pretty strong, so it will hold it in place really well. So that's what I found out about it. And I put my iPhone 6 Plus and it fits it uh, with 
more than enough room so here is the camera and the video button a short press it will take a photo a long press it will take a video and here is the camera tilt button so you press the button and the camera will tilt up and then it will start tilting down and then it will start tilting up so just one press of the button and then you can stop it where you want to stop here's the power on and off switch here you power it on and here's the return to home button and a one key to take off and land button very minimalistic no trim button so there's a button in the back to do the trim hold this button down and do the trim that you want to trim on your quad up the wall the quad copter is flying so that is a good thing and here we have the speed changing button uh, it goes from speeds one two and three so it's on the back of the transmitter so on the right is the speed button on the left is the trim button and this will take four double a size batteries now to calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter the pitch and roll stick to the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter and you want to arm and disarm the motors of the quadcopter both sticks to the bottom and in will arm and disarm the motors of the quadcopter and to bind the quadcopter to the remote control hold the throttle stick all the way down once everything is turned on and you will have a successful binding of the quadcopter to the remote control all right so that is just about it so let's go for a little demo flight with the potenzic d60 all right here we go with the demo flight of the potenzic d60 looking pretty nice it is a pretty sturdy hefty feeling quadcopter even without the battery so all you got to do is slide the battery in it will power up the quadcopter but before you do that you want to turn your remote control on there you go turn it on and then slide the battery in all the way now it will sing a little song so what you want to do now is hold down the throttle stick all the way to the bottom and it will now complete the binding process from the remote control to the quadcopter now there's some led lights flashing there's some red leds in the rear green leds in the front but only the left side is flashing at the moment on the right side there's nothing that is on at the moment now that in indicates that we are ready for compass calibration so we're going to do the compass calibration dance which is horizontal rotation okay there you heard a beep and now the led lights on the left side has gone solid and now we have blinking led lights on the right side of the quadcopter so you're going to go nose up and rotate it one more time doesn't matter counterclockwise or clockwise and there you go another beep is heard on the remote control and now all of the lights are solid as well now that also indicates that we have acquired all of the necessary GPS satellites for return to home function and the GPS functions to work. But if we did not acquire all of the necessary satellites, the GPS satellites, these lights will be blinking all at one time. All right, so let's go ahead and put it down. Now, let's check out the remote tilt capability of the camera here. So pushing this button, check it out all the way up. And if you keep holding on to it, I believe it'll go down. There you go. It'll start going down all the way, all the way down. And it'll, ooh, 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 it'll move up and down. Okay, let me leave it on the table. And there you go. Slowly going up. And you can stop it at any time to your liking. I'm going to leave it all the way up. And we are good to go. All right, so now you want to calibrate the gyros of the clock up there so the pitch stick to the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros of the clock up there as you can see the lights are blinking away and once they turn solid the gyro has been calibrated as well so we got the compass calibration done correctly as well as the gyro calibration so we are good to go now i'm not going to be putting my cell phone on here for the initial test i'm going to be using my ipad so let's go ahead and power up the iPad here and turn on the phone app let me go into the settings go into the Wi-Fi section of your settings and connect to the UD 
IRC GPS Wi-Fi network. And it is a unsecured network. And there you go, the check mark has been shown. And here is the app. It looks like that Potensic GPS with some colorful schematics there. So let's go ahead and hit that app. It is a iPhone app, so you can scale it up to fit your screen on the iPad. So we are connected and it says go flying. And let's go and check it out. It is set on D60. So let's go ahead and hit that go flying. And here we go. We got Wi-Fi FPV. Let me go ahead and screen record. Hit that screen record and three, two, one, and it is screen recording. So that is how it looks like on an interface. And the video quality looks pretty nice too. A little bit of fish eye, which is nice. 110 degree field of view. So let's go ahead and take some photos. I want to just use the phone app to take some photos from the iPad. So let's go ahead and hit that. There you go. There's a shutter. So let's go ahead and make our rounds of taking some photos. Photo there. Photo there. There's a slight bit of breeze, maybe about five miles an hour. And there's some clouds appearing today. We're supposed to have some kind of a monsoon type of a condition tomorrow. So we might even have some thunder showers here in the high desert. So gotta get this thing done today. There you go, landing pad, the table, and those mountains way yonder. All right, so taking some photos there. All right, so let's go ahead and take some videos, and I'm going to hit that video icon. And there you go, it is blinking in red to indicate that we are recording a video. Now remember, I have the micro SD card insert it so we are going to be recording to the micro sd card now let's go ahead and check it out here let's check out the core functions one key to take off one key to land and also the return to home function and we'll check out the fail safe return to home as well i'm going to turn off the remote control to simulate a fail safe situation and then we'll do some fpv and then we'll do a little check on what the low voltage return to home does i'm not sure if it returns to home or it gives you a signal and you have to manually bring it home when it sends you the message when the battery is low all right so let's go ahead and check it out so arming the motors both sticks to the bottom and in arms the motors now here you can manually take off or you can hit the one key to take off and land button to take off whoops long press it and there you go automatic takeoff and the lights are solid green in the front red in the back very bright it's drifting a little bit we do have the optical flow sensor as well as gps position hole so it is looking pretty nice let's see what speed i am in there's the speed button here or this is the speed button okay speed number three let's go to speed number one and let's go forward whoa Whoa, it's got a pretty deep pitch and roll even in speed number one. Wow. So be very gentle with the pitch and roll stick. So just pitching forward very slowly for a smoother flight. There you go. Very small amount of pitch. So far it is very nice and smooth okay fully pitching in pit, uh, speed number one that isn't that bad once you get going it kind of stabilizes itself a little bit so here we go switching over to speed number two from the rear double beep and let's go whoa it's a sporty flyer, but it kind of plateaus off once you have made that turn. There, when you go on a straightaway, it kind of stabilizes itself. But the pitch and roll do get more exaggerated while you're making that turn. There you go. That is speed number two. All right. So let's check out speed number three. Whoa. 
Oh, this is a sporty flyer. <laughs> In speed number three, look at that pitch. But it still kind of plateaus off once you are going straight ahead. And the pitch have reduced itself. Look at that pitch while you're turning and then it kind of plateaus off. Right, so that is the behavior of this quadcopter. So you can kind of sport fly this thing too. With these brushless motors, very nice, but it does plateau off. Okay, let me put in some roll at the same time. Oh yeah, this is pretty nice. A decent flyer. Potenzic, huh? Potenzic D60. Made a nice brushless GPS quad. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the core functions. We got 20 minutes of flight time, so hopefully it is true. Let's hit that one key to land. Long press it and there's a beep and you can still redirect this path. It kind of made a little hop there and the motors turn off. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out from here. Now, we're gonna take off from the landing pad so that is going to be registered as the new home point. So when we do the return to home, it should come back and land on the landing pad or close to the vicinity of the landing pad. So let's arm the motors and then one key to take off. Long press it and there you go from the ground. So that is the height that it comes to from the ground and check it out. It's got a very nice position hold slightly away now. Okay, let's get it angry. Oh yeah, it did get angry, but it did not go back to that spot that it was holding position. It kind of veered off. Anyways, let's go ahead and check out the return to home button and see its behavior while it's returning to home. So let's place it right there, let go of the stick. And it does have that wild pitch. Yeah, look at that. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the return to home. There you go, rising up in altitude and beeping can be heard throughout. Oh, and it turns around and it is heading back. All right, so it turns around and you can see all of the lights are flashing away. Oh, and it turns around one more time and it starts to come down. Okay, let's see how close to the takeoff spot. Pretty nice so far. Oh, and it hovers in its place at this altitude before it makes a final descent, I believe. Or does it? Oh yeah, it will descend all the way. And it will land right about maybe two to three quadcopter distances away from its takeoff spot, which is plenty good enough all right so the one key to take off land and as well as the return to home works just perfect so let's go ahead and arm the motor one more time and i'm going to manually take off this time throttling up and pushing it out wow oh, yeah. wild pitch but it does plateau off okay letting go of all the sticks and it comes to a hover all right so let's go ahead and simulate a fail safe situation so we're going to disconnect from the remote control to the quadcopter i'm going to do that by turning off the remote control turned it off let's see how long it takes oh right away about three seconds or so and it turns around again and it is heading back all right so it does have fail safe return to home so you can fly this thing with a peace of mind that it will return home once you have gone too far and the maximum control distance on paper it says 1640 something feet i believe which equates to uh via google a 500 meter distance so it comes to a hover again at this altitude one more time and it's going to come down and land i hope there you go it's going to come down and land oh look at that it's going to land pretty much on the same spot it landed the first time about 
this time around maybe about four quadcopter distances away so let's put it back on the landing pad and i'm going to turn on the remote control now okay do i have to do the throttle all the way down nope let's go ahead and arm the motors yep we are reconnected so while it's coming back you can regain connection and you can take control of the quadcopter so let's go ahead and test that out okay letting go of the sticks and let's go ahead and turn off the remote so a gps quadcopter is just awesome because it will come back as long as you got battery life it will come back so it is turning around it's coming back i want to go ahead and reconnect by turning on the remote control once again and check it out it is beeping so what i'm going to do is hit the return to home button And check it out, I have regained control of it. It is not coming down anymore, so I am able to fly. So while it's coming back and you got reconnected, you will have to hit that return to home button once you visualize the drone coming towards you and take over the controls of the quadcopter. Or if you just leave it alone, then it will complete the fail safe return to home process, which it will come all the way back to your take off spot and land itself automatically so it is really really nice all right so let's go ahead and do some fpv so i'm in speed number three at the moment i'm gonna go to speed number one and let's see if we can do some fpv all right so there it is slightly tilted so i don't get glare there we go all right so we're looking away from ourselves, I think, and going away. Okay, let me do a slow yaw turn. And I think I'm right above myself, so I'm not going to see myself. Oh, there I am. Yeah, there you go. Letting go of the yaw stick and just pitching straight. And I'm going over myself. Very nice no interference so far no drop frames or anything like that making a left turn oh yeah this thing works really nice let me go away from myself and i'm pitching all the way so that is the angle of video that you get so pretty nice okay letting go of the pitch a little bit and doing a yaw spin and there i am again well, this is really, really nice. Potensic has done a good job on this quadcopter, I think. So far, so good. And looks like I got 36% battery life. And I'm still recording. And hopefully I'm still recording on my screen record. Yes, there we go. So as you can see here, I got 33% of battery life left. So pretty soon it will give me a warning a low voltage warning so we'll see what it does when that happens and check out the quadcopter way out there just hovering away all right so let me go up in altitude a little bit and let's check out the camera tilt let me turn around okay there i am okay holding the button down and look at that it is tilting down All the way to the ground i believe that's the maximum tilt and now it is tilting up and i'm yawing a little bit at the same time okay all the way up all right so let me go ahead and come towards myself here now we got 30 percent of battery life left okay i'm directly in front of me and it is wobbling a little bit to situate itself and it's wobbling a lot actually okay come on hold your position all right let me go down in altitude just a little bit and let go of the sticks 
it is still wobbling away it is doing that fishbowl activity you might want to recalibrate at this time but let's see if I let go of the stick right here okay all right so we are back GPS hold so turning around facing myself and tilting the camera down and looks like we got 23 percent of battery life there we go camera tilt all the way down and stopping it so very nice you are able to tilt your camera down and it is a very slow tilt down so you don't get none of that jerky motion and if you keep holding on to it it'll go back up and you can stop it at any time to your liking I'm gonna leave it all the way up all right so let's go ahead and wait now then and see what happens so that toilet bowl activity oh there we go low voltage warning and it is coming back home all right so we got low voltage return to home at how many percent of battery life at 19 percent of battery life so it hit that 20 percent and it started to do the low voltage return to home and i can yaw as well and i can also direct the path of its descent while it's coming down so look at that it stops at that altitude that's when you can kind of fix your quadcopter so it doesn't land on something that you don't want la it landing on so let me go ahead and see if i can land right there and the beeping has changed so i believe now maybe we are in second stage of return to home okay let's see if we can take off what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off warning. Now the drone is in low battery status. If fly again, it will not be able to return home automatically and may cause loss. Okay, so I guess we will stop right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video recording. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my screen recording as well. All right, so there you go, guys. That is basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and see if it will take off again, even though it is giving me the low voltage warning. You can still arm the motors and you can still take off. Okay. So now we are in low voltage situation. So we are still able to fly. Now I'm not sure if this is still in between first and second stage. Of low voltage so let's see what happens once it is really out of battery I'm not gonna fly around too much I'm just gonna let it hover right above the landing pad okay let's see if it just comes down I'm gonna go back to the phone app here and I am going to resume my screen recording i should have just left the screen recording on so we got 17 percent showing on the battery life here oh 16 percent and i got 17 satellites locked in all right everything is looking good so far it has drifted a little bit away from the landing Pad. so let me go back to the landing pad okay we've got 15 percent so you are able to still fly around even though we are in the low voltage phase or the first phase so the second phase will hit pretty soon and hopefully it does automatically land itself we don't know if it's going to land itself on the spot where it is or we don't know if it's going to do the return to home function so let's just go and do some back and forth movements here until the battery goes way down and it is at eight percent so it should be doing something pretty soon and let's see what it does it 
to some funnels to waste the battery power. Oh, check it out. It is just going to come down and land itself. So it will not do a full return to home. It will just come down and land itself. Let's see what the battery life was. Oh, it is showing 0%. So it goes all the way down to 0% as it is shown on the phone app. And it just comes down and it lands itself. All right, there you go, guys. Pretty decent quadcopter by Potensic, the D60. All of the functions work very well. One key to take off, one key to land, as well as all of the return to home functions work perfectly. And we do have a situation where when it runs out of battery completely, it will land itself on the spot. All right, so there you go. My review and test flight of the Potensic D60. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.